How do we add numbers like a half and a third? The first thing to understand is that the sum is not achieved by adding the tops and the bottoms separately. The answer to this sum is not two-fifths. If you stop and think about it, that should be fairly obvious really. After all, two-fifths is not even as big as a half. A half of five is two and a half. Two is less than that. So if we're adding something to a half, we surely have to get something bigger than a half, and not less. So how do we go about it? Well, we need to view the problem. What well, What is it about these fractions that makes it difficult? They're different kinds of thing. The first thing is halves, and the second thing is thirds. Let's use a simple analogy. Suppose we have two apples and three oranges. The analogy here is that these are different objects again, apples and oranges, just like halves and thirds are different. What I want to do with the apples and oranges is to, de to find a way of describing them with a single term, a single statement. Well, we can look for something that they have in common. Apples and oranges are both examples of fruit, so we could say that we have five pieces of fruit. In that way, we've avoided referring individually to the fact that we have apples and oranges and combined them into a collective statement that we have five things. I wonder if we could do this for the halves and the thirds. Well, the answer is yes. The secret is to realize that one half is the same as three lots of a sixth. The ratio 1 to 2 is the same as the ratio 3 to 6. In the same way, 1 third is equivalent to 2 out of 6. So here, instead of saying pieces of fruit, we say that we have sixths, and the half is 2 of them, and a th sorry, 3 of them, and a third is 2 of them. So now we can combine the number of sixths and say that we have five sixths. And that is the answer to the sum of one half plus a third. Now what was the secret here? I suppose it should be a bit obvious that six comes from having been two multiplied by three. Perhaps we could apply this same principle. Let's do a different combination. Let's do a quarter plus a fifth. Before we used sixths, and we used sixth because that was two times three, giving six. Here perhaps we should use twentieths. A quarter, that's the ratio one to four, is the same as five over twenty, because five is a quarter of twenty. Similarly, a fifth is the same as 4 over 20. So it follows that a quarter plus a fifth can be written in terms of twentieths. Here the twentieths are like saying the pieces of fruit. So we have 5 over 20 for the quarter, 4 over 20 for the fifth, and altogether how many twentieths is that? 5 and then another 4 is 9 twentieths. That is the correct answer for a fifth plus a quarter. In both the examples we've done, it was important that the denominator, that is the thing underneath in the answer, is the lowest number that we could have. It's the lowest number in the case of six, it's, it's the lowest number that both two and three divide into exactly. Similarly, in the case of 20, it's the lowest number that both 4 and 5 divide into exactly. For that reason, it's called the lowest common denominator. That's rather cumbersome to write, so we often abbreviate it as the LCD. Let's now look at another case that's just a little bit different. Let's have a look at a half plus a quarter. we should now realize that what we have to do is find the lowest common denominator. Your first instinct might be to say, well, 2 times 4 is 8, and so it's eighths. 
but actually there is a smaller number than that that both 2 and 4 go into. In fact, they both go into 4. We could write the half as 2 divided by 4, and the quarter is just itself, 1 divided by 4. So a half plus a quarter is 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4, and that makes 3 quarters. What would have happened if we'd not bothered to think about that? Suppose we'd just multiplied the 2 by the 4 and said, let's use eighths. If we'd done that, we would have found that a half is 4 divided by 8, and a quarter is 2 divided by 8. And in that case, a half plus a quarter is 4 eighths plus 2 eighths. And that comes to how many eighths? Well, 4 plus 2 is 6 eighths. At first sight, it looks as though we've got a different answer. But we can think of 6 as 2 times 3, and we can think of 8 as 2 times 4. And then if we know about cancellation, we can cancel the 2's. And sure enough, we end up back with the 3 quarters that we found in the first place. OK, so the secret is to add fractions that we have to find the lowest common denominator. The same method also works for subtraction. So let's finish by doing a subtraction of two fractions. Let's have a look at one quarter, subtract one seventh. Look for the lowest common denominator. Four times seven is twenty-eight, and actually there's nothing lower that both go into. So we use twenty-eighths. One over four is equivalent to seven divided by twenty-eight, and one over seven is equivalent to four divided by twenty-eight. So altogether, a quarter minus a seventh is seven over twenty-eight minus four over twenty-eight, which comes to seven take away four is three of the twenty-eighths. 3 does not divide exactly into 28, so no cancellation is possible, and that is our answer. To finish off, I'd like to set you a little challenge. This is something that we'll be having a look at a bit later on. Suppose instead of actual numbers, we had a pair of fractions to add that look like 1 over x plus 1 over y. I wonder if you can work out how we'd go about doing this one. I'm not going to do it here, but it will appear in a, another maths class quite separately from this one. I'll leave you to think about it.